Hey, welcome back to How to Barbecue Right. I'm Malcolm Reed. You got to bear with me today. My voice is a little shot from being at Memphis and May all last week, but I've got some beautiful big beef ribs that we're going to smoke today. I'm calling these my Mojo beef ribs in honor of my buddy Jay Durbin from Tennessee Mojo. We're going to get some seasoning on the outside of them. We're going to give them a good smoke bath on the old hickory, and they're going to be fantastic. Let's get to cooking. So I got these beef ribs from the butcher shop down in Pensacola, Florida. My buddy Kevin sent them up to me and I wanted them left whole. I'm cooking these as racks. A lot of times you'll see these in the supermarket, they'll be cut up into pieces of short ribs where the butchers just make cuts across. You can even see them flanking style where they're cut really thin, but I love cooking them whole just like this. It's just like eating brisket point on the bone. There's a lot of beautiful meat on here. It's marbled up. You can see the fat that goes through it and they're fantastic when you get some smoke and build some bark on the outside. I didn't do a whole lot to them. I took them out of the package, kind of took a paper towel, blotted them off, and then I just trimmed a little bit of the sinew off the top so I can get down to the meat. I want to build that bark right there. If you leave the sinew on, it's just going to be a barrier. On the back side, they do have a membrane. You don't have to pull it off on these beef ribs. It's going to hold these racks together, and we're not going to eat that anyway. We'll still put a little seasoning on it, but what we're focusing on is all all of this meat that's on top of the bones, that's where all your flavor is and that's what's gonna melt in your mouth when it's cooked properly. The first thing we're gonna do to these beef ribs is get some salt, pepper, garlic going on them. I've just got my AP seasoning. It's a good blend of those three spices and it's a good base flavor. It's gonna really bring some savoriness. Now next, I'm hitting them with my buddy Jay's new beef rub. It's Tennessee Mojo and it goes excellent on brisket. I know it's going to be fantastic on these beef ribs. You could use any kind of rub you want that goes with beef. You just want something that doesn't have a lot of sugar in it. We're just going to pat that in and then we're going to go back to the meat side. Now this is the money side here. Same treatment. We're giving it a little AP, salt, pepper, garlic. We're going to hit them with a the Mojo beef rub. It's smoky. It's spicy. It's got a lot of pepper in it. It's really got a good bite for beef. You got to get the ends of those bones as well. And to top it all off, I'm going with a little coarse ground steak rub right on top for some added texture and a little pop. You can see the herbs, you can see the spices in that steak rub, and it's really going to bring some flavor to these beef ribs. Just loosely patting it to create that coarse texture. It's going to build a beautiful bark on the outside. Now we're going to do the next one. We're just going to layer them up right here on the board. Little AP, hitting them with the mojo. Pat it in just a little bit. Flavor those bones on the back side. And we're gonna flip them over and do the same thing. AP, Mojo Beef. Don't forget the sides. A Little bit of steak rub for some texture. Oh, it looks awesome. Now these beef ribs just need to sit here on the cutting board and get real happy in all that seasoning for about 30 minutes. Perfect time to fire up the pit. I'm cooking on my old Hickory CTO. Got some charcoal briquettes in there for heat, but we also need some smoke. So I'm gonna run some chunks of Hickory and pecan to give it a nice flavor. Once that pit hits 250, we're ready to cook. All right, our pit is up to temp. Now we're gonna put these beef ribs right on the rack. Just give them enough space to where smoke and the heat can circulate around them. Now we're gonna close the smoker, lock it down and let this old hickory pit do its job. You can cook this recipe on any pit. Just hold it at 250 degrees, throw some pecan, some hickory on there for some smoke, and now we're just gonna let it cook, let it get that bark on the outside. I'll show you what it's like when we baste it with a little mojo beef base here in just a few minutes. So it's been about an hour and a half on these beef ribs, and this is the point where they're gonna start to dry out a little bit. You can see the bark's forming on them. It's looking good, but I wanna get some mop on them. I've just mixed up what I'm calling a little mojo mop. It has some beef broth in it. It has some soy, some Worcestershire, and that Tennessee mojo loves pickles. That's his number one vegetable, so I added a little bit of pickle juice in this. That's what's making it that mojo mop. And I'm just gonna give them a mist. And it's just gonna keep a little moisture on top of them. Keep them cooking, keep that bark forming. We still got a long ways to go on these beef ribs, but they're looking good. Look how they're swelling up. You can see all that meat on top. Man, they're gonna be good. Now we're just gonna close it back up. Keep letting these babies cook. We'll check on them in about another hour, see where we're at. All right, it's been about almost four hours on our beef ribs here. And this is what I'm wanting to see. We've got a beautiful bark going on them. You can see that fat's rendered. It's bubbling, they're getting soft. They're gonna be about ready to wrap. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spritz them one last time. Just keep those flavors going, keep some moisture on them. 
Now we've just about got that bark right where I want it. We're gonna give them another 30 minutes and then we're gonna wrap them and get them really tender. All right, we're gonna wrap these ribs now and check these out, I'm gonna get one of them off here. This is what I'm looking for. We've got that bark on the outside. The bones are popping through, but it's not quite tender as I want it. So we're gonna take them over and we're gonna wrap them up in some butcher paper over on the cutting board. So before we wrap them, I wanna check the tenderness. And I'm really not worried about the internal temperature. I mean, it's saying it's about 180, 185 degrees internal, but it's really about the feel and we've got a ways to go. I want it to be almost like going through some warm butter if I'm sticking in. That's what the feel you're looking for. And we're still getting some resistance on these. But let's get these ribs wrapped up. And we're gonna put them right back on the pit meat side up the same way they were so they can get tender and we can check them right through the paper if we need to. So we've got them all wrapped and now we're just gonna watch that internal temperature. I'm looking for about 200, 202 right in that range but it really doesn't matter about the temperature. It's all about the feel of that probe going into the meat. It's gotta be really soft to be perfectly tender. So our short ribs have been on about a total of five hours. They've been wrapped for just over an hour and I'm gonna go in here and check them, see how they're feeling. Now I can tell it's feeling soft. You see I'm hitting 202, that is perfect. That's where I want them. So we're ready to get these ribs off, but they're not done, I'm still gonna rest them. And I'm just setting them down in a dry cooler. This little one here is perfect for four racks. Now I'm just gonna put the lid on the cooler, but I wanna let them rest here for about an hour. Uh, you wanna come about every 15 minutes and just burp it. Just let some of that steam out. We're not trying to cook them any longer. We're just trying to slow them down, let them stop cooking. Let some of that moisture absorb back into the meat. And then we'll be ready to try them in about an hour. Now this is what we've been waiting on. Pulling these beef ribs out. I mean, look at them. That is awesome. Be careful with them so they don't fall apart. All right, so I let our beef ribs rest for one hour in the cooler. Then we just pulled them out of that butcher paper wrap. And you can see the bark is still just as beautiful as it was when we wrapped them because the paper absorbs all that moisture that renders out during that last final stage of cooking. And it leaves you with that really, really great tasting bark. Now final moment we get to cut these ribs up and it's super easy to do you're just gonna cut right in between the bones I mean look at that that is awesome I'm gonna cut some more of them up here yeah this one's just gonna get slid right out but we've got beef ribs and those look amazing I'll go ahead and cut some more up here the knife just goes right through them. I mean, they're really, really tender. And I don't know where that one thinks it's going, but it ain't getting away from me. Uh-oh, bone jumped out of that one. Bone comes out perfectly clean. I mean, just look at this. Look at all that moisture still in the beef rib. That fat's marbled all through it. It renders down. Since the bone jumped out of this one, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it into some slices so you can see what, we, what we're working with. I mean, that is just perfectly cooked beef rib. And it's pretty much like brisket point on the bone. And you know I gotta get a taste. I wanna get some of the one that we cut there that come right off the bone. Mm. That has so much flavor in it. It's beefy, but you get the spices. You get that mojo rub, the salt and the pepper and the garlic. The steak rub kind of helped with the texture on the bark. And basting it with the beef broth, the Worcestershire, the soy, the little pickle juice, just made a nice flavor over the top as it absorbed that smoke. And these are textbook, textbook beef ribs. We started with these beef plate ribs. We just trimmed the tops to get that excess fat and sinew right off the meat. We seasoned them with the AP, the Mojo Beef Rub, a little bit of steak rub for texture. Then we got them in some smoke at 250 degrees. After a few hours, they got the bark going. We started spritzing them with the mop. And then we wrapped them at the very end when they hit about 185 internal until we got up to about 202 degrees. And then we pulled them off and let them rest and then cut them up and it's pure pandemonium. I want to get me one of these big meat ribs on the bone and I'm going for it. Mmm. Mmm. 
That's how a man eats a beef rib right there. That is some of the finest eating you can ever have in barbecue. It's supposed to be messy, it's supposed to be big, and it's supposed to be delicious. Mmm. That bark is awesome. Hey, thanks for checking us out this week on How to Barbecue Right. You gotta try these beef ribs the next time you fire up that smoker. If you like what we're doing, subscribe to our channel. We're gonna be putting out videos all year long. You can also catch up with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and we wrap the whole week up when me and Shell sit down on our podcast and discuss all the delicious fun we have. We'll see y'all next time. Man, Shell, get in here and get you one of these. Mmm. If I think sexy, I don't know what is, baby. That's gonna give me the meat sweat, you know. <laughs> mm.